Warning, this video contains scenes of animals being dispatched in the UK using legal limit air rifles. Do not watch if you may be offended. Go and watch Charlie Bit My Finger instead. Okay, evening everyone again. Uh, just before we start, I want to say thanks to everybody for some really nice comments you've made about the videos. Asking me to make some more, which I will keep doing until everybody gets fed up with them. So thanks for that. If you have uh, commented, all comments are welcome. Anything you want to see. I've had quite a lot of questions about the kit I use. Um, so I try and answer them as much as I can. Put links in the description below to any of the kit that I'm using. Uh, anything I've bought, I'll give you a chance to look at them yourself. Decide whether you want to get one. Um, tonight, I'm just going to run through what I've got on the Dreamline. I've altered it a little bit, put some new things on it. Um, using both guns tonight. It's uh, Thursday the 20th of June about 7.15. Uh, I'm going to be out on the rabbits till probably quite late so I bought both guns. Um, use the, I'm going to use the Dreamline uh, while it's still light and then when it gets dark which will probably be after 10 o'clock to be honest. Um, the impact with the Excite on so if you want to skip straight to the shooting, hopefully there'll be some, um, I'll put the in the description below and on the bottom of the screen uh, is the time when the shooting starts on the video. Um, if you want to watch the kit uh, that I'm doing, that I'm sorry, that I've got tonight, uh, I'll run through that now. Um, so stick with it, otherwise we'll see you in a bit when the shooting starts. Okay. Right, starting at the business end. Uh, you may have noticed that I've replaced the moderator on the Dreamline. Brought it from Ian Newman, aka Blade. Uh, sells them on the forum on Facebook. I'll put a link to his um, page. And uh, excellent silencer. Um, £42.50 posted, 28mm diameter tube, uh, I believe 165mm long. And it tapers to 20 millimeters, which is exactly the diameter of the shroud on the Dreamline. So it looks a treat. Um, about half the price of the Huggit, and it's about half as quiet as the Huggit as well. So it's much better uh, silencer than the Huggit was. He, when he sends them out, he sends them disassembled because of the VCR Act in the UK, violent clan reduction. Um, not allowed to post complete moderators. Um, you assemble it yourself, it takes a few minutes, if that. Um, when he ships them, he ships them with blank baffles in as well. So the first time you fire a pellet through it is when it makes the hole. So obviously this is a 177 gun, I've only fired a 177 pellet through it. So it should be as quiet as any silencer for a 177 um, will be, because that's the only size pellet that's made the hole through the baffles. So obviously I'm not going to fit it on the impact anyway, but if you use it on a 177 gun, it's got a four and a half millimeter hole through the middle. Um, so that's excellent. Well happy with that bargain. So next, um, if you're thinking of getting a Dreamline, um, some people might not realize the cylinder is identical to the Wildcat uh, on the Dreamline, on the light anyway. Um, that 3D printed uh, Picatinny bracket is actually was designed for a Wildcat, but it fits perfectly on the Dreamline. Come from eBay, 20 quid plus delivery, about three, 23 pound. Um, it's 3D printed with Picatinny left and right and Picatinny on the bottom. Um, the bottom Picatinny rail is sliced in half. So you take the bipod off, it expands slightly. You can slide it up and down, put it wherever you want. Um, and then when you clamp the bipod on, it pulls it tight onto the cylinder so it doesn't move. Like I say, it was designed for the Wildcat. I actually messaged the guy and let him know um, that it fit the Dreamline and he's actually added another listing for the Dreamline on eBay now because of that. Uh, so if you do a search for a Dreamline on eBay, you'll come across it, but I'll put a link in the description below for that. Um, just a standard cheap Chinese copy Atlas bipod. But what it does is it moves the center of the bipod, uh, the pivot center forward for a much more stable shot. 
as you can see where the Picatinny rail is in front of the trigger guard compared to where the Picatinny rail is now. I mean, I was using a bipod extender like I've got on the impact, but it's still quite a lot of gun in front of the bipod. But by using one of those adapters, uh, you can shift it anywhere on that cylinder where you want it, forward or back. Just unclip the bipod, slide it down, clip the bipod back on and it tines up. So they're really good. Um, so that'll fit any, it fits the Streamline as well, I do believe. Uh, but obviously the Dreamline has got the full cylinder exposed, so you can fit it wherever you like on there. Uh, I've fitted a new scope to it. It's the Optizan 6x24, or 6 to 24 by 50 EVX first focal plane scope. Um, it's a lovely scope. I really like the Optizan scopes. Uh, really nice. Great reticle on there, loads of aim points. It's first focal plane, so I won't tell you how to suck eggs, but if you don't know what first focal plane is, uh, basically when you zoom in and out from 6 to 24 times, or whatever your scope does, the reticle uh, zooms in and out as well. So that your mill dots are always the same no matter what um, zoom setting you're on. If So if you if you set it at 10 times, you zero, and then say one mill dot of holdover is 40 yards, and you've zeroed at 30 yards. Um, on a second focal plane scope, which is where you zoom in and out and this, the uh, reticle stays the same size, the mill dots are only true for the magnification that you've zeroed it at. So if you set, if you zero it at um, 30 yards at 10 times, and then you zoom to 12 times, that 40 yard holdover won't be one mil dot anymore. It'll be probably one and a half mil dots or whatever. But on a first focal plane scope, that mil dot spacing stays true for any zoom from six to 24, because the reticle zooms in and out with the uh, zoom on the scope. Uh, the only disadvantage is that some people uh, will use a second focal plane scope and what they'll do is they'll zero at say 30 yards and then they'll change the zoom until the mill dot, say the first mill dot, is exactly 40 yards. So they might be shooting at eight times or eight and a half times or 11 times and they can actually, you can actually change the zoom so the holdover matches the mill dot. That's, you can't do that with a first focal plane. You're stuck with whatever it lands at because of the fact that it changes with the zoom. Um, so there's plus and minus um, to both. These generally tend to be more expensive, um, but I really like the Optizan scopes. Um, I did buy it with the intention that if I do go FAC later on, it can go on an FAC impact or whatever anyway. Um, so that's the scope. That came from Melbourne Guns uh, at Derby. Um, I'll put a link to that on eBay as well and also we've got the side shot scope cam um, using an iPhone SE um, that was from Braces of Bristol uh, when you order the scope cam uh, sorry the side shot um, this is obviously the mobile phone version that adjusts to fit any phone um, you specify the size of this bracket here because obviously this is a 30 millimeter bodied scope so I needed a 30 millimeter clamp. You can specify it with a 25, a 30 mil, or if you've won the lottery, you can order a 34 mil um, clamp as well. I didn't even know there was 34 mil scopes until I uh, saw that. And obviously there is, but they're really expensive things. Um, but uh, that's the side shot. Using an iPhone SE, and also using an app called Filmic Pro, which is, um, available on the app store that's what i bought an iphone um cheap iphone off ebay about 55 quid for an iphone se 32 gig um, but the app called filmic pro uh it's handy for the side shot because you uh you can set the exposure and you can lock the focus as well and you can also turn off the image stabilization uh, on the iphone camera which you can't do in the app because if you leave the iPhone st stabilization on, what it will do is the, the iPhone will try and compensate for movement in the scope and then you start getting wobbly images. Um, the other thing it does as well is inside here, 
there's a little 45 degree piece of glass that's got a reflective coating on so the light comes through into your eye and also reflects into the scope but it works a bit like a, uh, into this camera sorry what it does it also it works a bit like a periscope but the problem is is the image is reversed because you're basically looking in a mirror um, so like on on this scope the mill dots are numbered and obviously the numbers will look left and right wrong uh, and also um, when I'm moving right you it'll move left in the image but with filmic pro you can reverse the image on the vertical plane uh, that's being filmed so it actually corrects for that um, reversing of the uh, light coming in so it's really good I think it's 14.99 for the app but once you've bought it you've got it forever obviously and you can share it across different phones um, I'm filming this on an iPhone that's why I bought another iPhone to go on the scope because if I put this phone on the scope then obviously I couldn't film film uh, these videos so so that's all the kit I've got on here tonight bit of a change of stuff the impacts the same mark 2 with the ATNX site 4k okay so that's the kit I'm using tonight I'm also shooting JSB heavies uh, 4.52s in this it seems to like uh, really good um, doing 11.7 foot pounds with those um, it really likes those pellets it shoots really well with them as it does with all JSBs really but I like something with a bit more weight there's a bit of a breeze tonight um, so I'm just gonna I've just got something a bit heavier than the exacts just to try and carry the weight through the breeze um, I'm trying to shoot in a bit of shelter I'll try and keep the distance down to sort of 30 35 yards anyway um, as I always like to do so the plan is we're gonna pace a warren out here for a while and then if you watch the last uh, not the video from the farm the video before um, where I came back to the rabbits after dark and there was dozens of them I'm gonna take the impact down there once it gets dark and try and bag some of those uh, but might not go to plan I'm gonna set out now and see how we go I've just seen a few rabbits a couple of hundred yards to my right which I'm gonna go to and uh, try and um, bag a few of them before moving out off site onto that uh, near the golf course. Okay, we'll see how we get on. We'll see you in a bit. Right, I've got settled in as usual, up against the car. Beautiful, the wind's already dropping. Um, it's a really nice evening. So I looked up, and there's a pair of ears. And I'm just thinking about how much grass there is between the pellet and the rabbit. So I think there's a little too much grass, so I don't take the shot possibly have took it there but I don't want the pellet getting slowed down and causing problems so I'm going to give it a bit just to let it come out so I'm just not happy taking that shot there it's, uh, it's actually just come out from under that container you remember the one that's in the other video that some idiot shot and the one with the unexplained marks and uh, paint that doesn't match so uh, I'm just squeaking it now, just hoping to get it to come forward, it's not bothering at all. Um, so let's just wait. So I'm just not happy taking that shot there. So there we are, worth waiting for. 30 yards, bang on the zero, no problem. Okay, just a few minutes later, another one comes out exactly the same place. 
it's a little bit fidgety so I'm just waiting for the head to sit still so it's down back up down back up down down shoot down miss brilliant so he runs back under and uh, the next one I'm not sure whether it's the same one because he come out from the right hand side um, but I was watching through my scope and you'll see there that I've actually allowed for holdover I didn't need because he ran out next to a tree that I thought was the uh, 40 yard tree that I'd pinged and it was actually the 30 yard tree that I'd pinged so I've shifted position now uh, behind where the car was that was a youngster at about 25 yards and then I've moved up again a bit further up the field because it seemed to be just all over the place this one's at 35 yards to the hedge line so I've just given it a half a mil dot after I remember to take the safety off of course and that's just straight in no problem so I'm just looking to my right now and there's another one ran out because he heard the noise of the crack and uh, just judging the distance because I can't make the move to the rangefinder so I'm thinking it's probably about 35 yards so I'll give it a bit more hold over the same and no it was about 30 yards actually it turned out in the end so I put a pellet straight over the top of his head so a bit later now it's like quarter to ten now um, the side shots really struggling in the dark now but obviously it's a reflected image um, but there's a few out all of a sudden so I'll they're at 35 yards and then the one at the back's at 50 so I'll give it two mil dots absolutely no wind perfectly still no problem there and that one still lingers in the foreground you can see um, my image looked a lot better than your image does through the scope so that's the third one at 35 yards okay here's the last three that I took that one, that one, and one just there. That was exactly 50 yards. 55 yards to that green container. 50 yards, two mil dots. Shooting from down. there okay get these picked up go and get the X site sorted on the uh, impact and move around it's 10 o'clock now so it's just starting to get dark I love the summertime it's beautiful there's not a breath of wind which is why I was able to take a shot at 50 yards it's absolutely perfect so I'm gonna go now to get the uh, pack the dream line away get the impact get set up move around we're gonna hit them in the dark okay this shortly it's not what I want to see it's either got an eye infection or there's mixy about and he's the first one this year I've seen and I'm hoping that uh, the rest of him looks clean as a male, whether he's just got white puss in his eye, I don't know, whether it's early mixy. Oh, I just hope it isn't, can't be doing with it. But if it is, at least it put him out of his misery anyway. We suffered really badly with mixy here last year, but I've not seen one this year yet with it. But it looks like I might have done this time. His other eye's clear on the other side, but could be the early signs. He looks like he's been scratching under his eye, so it's been irritating him. So, uh, could be bad news here, but we'll see how we go. Okay, that's seven for the Dreamline. Great gun. Really accurate. When it's got somebody who can shoot behind it. Okay, just a little extra bit of kit I've got tonight for the first time. And I've got a Night Sight Sentinel which is a uh, handheld night vision unit. Basically, 
shines a 940 nanometer beam onto uh, to around 50 yards so you can uh, use it as a handheld spotter basically excellent little thing comes straight on straight off no problem 940 nanometer beam as well which means it's virtually invisible instead of like the 850 one um, there's virtually no red glow on the other side um, just a handheld unit on and off button nice and simple quick on I used to use like a handheld um, monocular um, which was like a looked like a bit like a laser range finder and you look through it press the button switch the infrared on but it took about you know 20 30 seconds to actually fire up and get set up um, plus you had to hold it up to your eye which you're on you're on a bipod um, it's a bit tricky because you're sort of leaning up on one elbow and the guns in the way Whereas this, you can just flick it on and just scan it round, you know, how you want it. And you can see um, the eye shine. Um, this is the Sentinel version, which is the basic 50 meter one, which is perfect for air gun rangers. £199 these are. It's got a built-in rechargeable battery, you just charge it up. Um, and uh, they do a pro version, which I think takes video. Uh, and there's another version after that which is longer range for probably people with uh, like 223s that sort of thing it's great flick it on it's straight on and you can scan the hedge line watch for the eye shine I'll, I'll use it out when we get around to where the rabbits are just to see uh, see if you can see the rabbits through it it's a great little thing really a handy little thing to have little compact unit great this was from uh, Countryway Gun Shop in Essex um, Virtually next day delivery, Parcel Force 24 hour they use. Great service from them where I got the impact from. Um, I'll put a link down below in the description to it so you can sort of decide if you want one, order it from them or wherever. But great piece of kit. Okay, let's get on with the impact then. Okay, speaking of the impact. Um, just going to show you how I've got this, the light, uh, laser rangefinder mounted this evening. Uh, if you notice, I put it on its side rather than vertically, and there's two reasons for that really. Um, when it projects a beam, when you hold the rangefinder upright, it projects a vertical beam, uh, which is okay, but when a rabbit is mainly a horizontal target as it sits it chewing the grass, <coughs> um, the beam can hit the grass in front of the rabbit or miss the rabbit above and you can get a false reading on distance so what I've done is I've mounted it sideways so the beam which you'll see later on in the video the beam is a horizontal so it flashes across the rabbit and gives you more an accurate reading also when you're down there and reaching your hand up here it's easier to press the button with your left hand rather than reaching over the top of the scope to press it down um, and now obviously I put the uh, infrared lamp on the right hand side of the gun so when I press that button I'm not blocking my own beam so uh, so that's the reason really you can also do it with the um, the laser range finders that you can buy from eBay uh, in fact when I used to have one of those I did the same thing I mounted it sideways and uh, you'll see the horizontal flash rather than the vertical flash and let's like say when you're hunting rabbits um, if the rabbit's a horizontal shape it just it sort of paints the rabbit with the beam better than the vertical uh, beam hitting the grass in front of the rabbit and giving you a false reading especially when you're laying on a bipod because you're on you're very low to the ground and if you hit the you can hit the uh, ground you know five to ten yards in front of the rabbit if you're not careful and get a false reading and miss um, so that's why I've got that mounted that way but you'll see later in the video uh, that I um, assuming there's rabbits out I'm pretty sure there will be uh, you'll see that I've actually had the uh, beam sideways on and see how it uh, how it works okay I'm gonna drive around there now and uh, see how it's going if you can see it on there all the rabbits that are out. There's bloody loads of them.
Right, I've just got the excite switched on now. I didn't notice in the bottom corner that I'd factory reset it and uh, the time and date's wrong. So it is wrong all the way through. But there's nothing I can do about that now. But it was about 11 o'clock when I started shooting with it. But as you can see, loads out. Absolutely loads. So I'll get set up. Adjust the uh, range. So I just ranged those ones and they were 65 yards. You'll notice the horizontal beam. I've got it set up now. 33 yards. Take the safety off again. Oh, no problem. That's the first one. Okay, next one. There's a bit of a rise and fall on the land, so it can be a bit of a pain here because it, it rolls a little. So the rabbits are sitting down a bit low. That one, 34 yards. No problem there. It's easy shooting, really, when there's no wind. Absolutely spot on. Get your distance right, can't miss, he says. I'm looking round. Check that one. Ping him. 46. So zoom in on him. Starts to run, but keep tracking him. Don't run very far. The range will still be the same. It's another one down. Okay, next one. Ping him. It's getting really damp now. I've noticed that the uh, rangefinder is starting to get some false readings because the grass is really saturated. But that one's worked out okay. 62 yards, so that's too far. So we'll leave him for another time. It's not long before another one comes along. 29 yards. Perfect. Just what we want. No problem there. Nice and clean. Start to pan around. See if there's any more. They're coming out just all over the place. See what I mean about the land rolling? It's sort of little dips that they're sitting in. When you're laying on the bipod, you're obviously virtually flat to the floor. That's the laser again. getting a false reading off the floor there but 53 that's it that's about as far as I'll push it got every confidence in the kit I wouldn't have gone over 60 but that should be fine which it is next one bit of a family gathering I did notice there's another one using the sentinel over to my right I'll just concentrate on these two for now 31 yards, perfect again. That's the first one, second one doesn't get very far. Just give a little bit of hold over slightly because he's ran a few yards back. Second one down, now I'm just looking for the one on the right. I remember that I saw. Where is he? Where is there somewhere? There he is, he'll do. 7 out of 10 for the backflip. Landing was rubbish. Execution, perfect. Okay, time to call it a night, I think. Not a good one. Used both guns. Had quite a few. Okay, time to wrap up. And in case you're wondering, uh, the rabbits don't go to waste. This is a local scout group that's had some off me before, and they're having three of these from tonight for their camp next week. They're making their own rabbit stew carrots, taters, onions, gravy, bread. Beautiful. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. If you did like it, 
like subscribe and share and I'll see you next time bye for now